Hello, I'm your professor, Christina Knudsen, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about likelihood-based inference for generalized linear mixed models, in particular using our package, GLMM. Alrighty, so I'm gonna write on these slides, and so you don't have to look at the bottom of my face, I'm going to hide my camera. Um, so let's start with the linear model because in order to build up to the generalized linear mixed model, we need to start with the basics, the linear model. If you've taken an intro stat class, you know that we have some assumptions for the linear model, including we assume that our responses are normally distributed, we assume that our responses are independent, and we assume that our responses have equal variance. So what we're going to do is take these assumptions, these three assumptions, loosen them up in order to build to the generalized linear mixed model. Okay, so first assumption we're going to um, loosen up is the assumption that we must have normally distributed data. Okay, so let's think of an example. I like to go rock climbing. And so a question I could ask is, will I succeed while rock climbing? Will I make it to the top or will I not? And this sort of data is binary because I could say I either make it to the top or I do not. And so we have two options there. And binary data we know is not normally distributed. So we need to use a different kind of response. And in particular here, it would be appropriate to use a Bernoulli or maybe a binomial if I have multiple attempts. So when we have a response that is not normal, if we have a response that is instead um, binomial or Poisson or negative binomial, something like that, then we're going to use a generalized linear model. So the G is for generalized, and that's so that we can have um, more than just a normal response. Okay, so in that climbing example, our response was going to be um, binary. And so in particular, that means that instead of having y hat equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times x, we're going to use instead perhaps the log odds. Log p over 1 minus p is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 times x. So this is what we're changing in order to use our binary data. Okay, next example, say that we're interested in looking at like how many scoops of ice cream I eat over the summer, how many uh, cookies I eat in a day, how many minutes I walk my dog for. So this again would be um, better modeled with something other than a normal because we know that normal distributions cover the entire real line and I can't eat a negative number of cookies, I can't eat a negative number of um, scoops of ice cream. So we want something that's strictly positive, and so it would make sense to use a Poisson perhaps. So if we're using the Poisson distribution, then we're going to look at the log mean number of minutes walked or the log mean number of cookies. So that means that instead of using y hat equals beta naught plus beta one times x, we're going to be using the log mean is equal to beta naught plus beta one times x, and we need to indicate that this is a prediction, so let's just put a half there. All right, so this is now looking at if we're using a Poisson. Okay, so now we've seen two types of generalized linear models. We've seen the kind where we use um, the log odds, this is called the log odds. And then we've seen a regression using the log mean. Okay, so now we've looked at the generalized linear model. Let's go back to the just plain old linear model and now we'll extend it to a linear mixed model. So we said before that we need to have observations that are independent for a linear model. But what happens when our observations are instead correlated? Well, in order to model that correlation, we're going to use something called the linear mixed model. So we add an M in there to say mixed to take into account this correlation. 
So the way that a linear mixed model works is we're going to leave some of the parameters as fixed effects and we're going to make other parameters into something called random effects. Alrighty, so let's just do a quick example here. So say we have y hat equals beta naught plus beta one times x plus, now let's say we're doing a model for my family here. So we have a couple brothers, we've got my dad, we've got my sister, we've got me, and then we've got my husband. So something that we could potentially do if we just forget about this whole random effects thing for a minute, something that we could do to give everybody their own effect is just give everyone their own beta. So we could have beta two if we're looking at Christina. We could have beta three if we're looking at John plus beta four if we're looking at dad plus and so on. Okay, if we did this and had a beta for each one of the people, in this example here, we only have six people, so giving everyone their own beta is not a big deal. We could totally handle that. But imagine that I'm having a huge family reunion. My mom is one of nine, and so I have a whole lot of aunts, uncles, cousins, and I like just so many people in my family. So if we just kept on going, then maybe we'd have like beta 92 if we're looking at Johnny. And so all of a sudden we've gone from having a reasonable number of betas to having a whole lot of betas here. So what we can do is turn some of these betas into what's called a random effect. So let's leave this beta and this beta as they are. We'll leave them as so-called fixed effects and we'll change these individualized betas into random effects. So um, with this notation, U will be um, indicating random effects. So like U2 will be my random effect. We'll give John U3, we'll give dad U4, and then we'll give my cousin Johnny U92. Okay, so the beauty of this is that now we just have three parameters. We've got beta naught, beta one, and then our variance. And this variance is for the random effects. So we assume that U1, U2, all of these U's are IID from a normal distribution with mean zero and variance sigma squared. Okay, so we've got three parameters, which is much better than having 93 parameters for beta zero through beta 92. Okay. Okay, so why are these components called random effects? It's because we've made them into random variables, and usually we assume that they're normal with mean zero. In particular, it's important to remember that random effects are not parameters. Instead, the parameter is the variance of the random effects. So just like we set up here, these random effects have some shared variance sigma squared. And it doesn't have to be a single sigma squared, it doesn't have to be a single variance, um, but in this example, I'm just making a single variance um, just to illustrate the general idea of a mixed model. Okay, so the parameters in a linear mixed model, we have our fixed effects. So like beta naught, beta one, and if you have any other betas in there, you can at write those down as fixed effects, and then we have our variance components. So here I just have the one variance component, but we could have multiple if we wanted. Okay, so the assumptions of our linear mixed model is that responses are normal, independent, and have equal variance conditional on the random effects. So conditional on the random effects, then the responses are normal, independent, and have equal variance. Alrighty, now let's look at the random effects. What are our assumptions on the random effects? We assume that they're normal, independent, have mean zero, 
and oftentimes we also assume they're normally distributed. But in particular, we do not need to have um, a single variance for all the random effects. We could have like uh, one variance for the Knudsen's. We could have one variance for my cousins who live in California, and we could have another variance for the cousins who live in Iowa, if we would like. All right, so that is our linear mixed model. And again, that's to model correlated data. Now what happens if our observations are non-normal and correlated, so we have both going on at the same time? Well, then we're going to use a generalized linear mixed model. So what that means is that we have the random effects in order to model our correlation, and then we're going to use um, on the left-hand side, rather than y equals beta naught plus beta one times x one plus blah, 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 rather than having a y on this left-hand side, we're going to have something like the log mean or the log odds. All right, so that is how we build from the linear model to the generalized linear mixed model.